Hey, welcome everybody to Building Character. I'm your host, Rick, and today on Building Characters, we are going to be using the D&D Beyond uh, uh, platform again to build another character. Uh, I want to get better at this because next week, Zeb Cook will be here, and uh, I want to make sure that I'm locked into how this works so that I don't look like a fool in front of Zeb. <laughs> but today's character is on the spinner. Let's take a look. All right. So this is what we're going to use today. It is a Dark Souls miniature. I thought it was really cool. We painted this a while back on Painting Happy Little Minis, but I really like this uh, particular miniature, and I think we can make a good build around him or her. It could be a, a female under that armor. So let's uh, start right off. What do you think the class to this character would be? We've got D&D &D Beyond already uh, loaded up and ready to go. So. You know our choices, Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Sorcerer, Warlock. I'm kind of thinking Paladin. We haven't really done many, if any, Paladins on our program. So, but it's up to you guys. The chops are go. <laughs> Daniel says Paladin. Eldritch Knight, ba Battlemaster, or Paddle Paladin. So we got three Paladin. All right, we're going to do that. Let's... Uh, I'm going to click on the Paladin and add that class right there. But um, so we have our hit points. Uh, based on the character, uh, how the character looks, what level do you think this Paladin would be? He's got a lot of gear. He's really geared up. So he could be up there. And uh, we also get to pick our proficiencies. I'm going to choose, a, we got some choose paladin skills, and I think, any one of those, what do you think? We got our, uh, athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, persuasion, and religion. Ooh, mini painting studio says eighth level. That's, that's a fun level to play. Uh, being Dark Souls, Oath of Conquest. I don't know if you have the Xanthar expansion on your D. Dave, I do not have it on, on D&D Beyond yet. Um, we, we're, we just have the core player's handbook right now. I will be adding more uh, as we progress throughout the year. Um, probably like a new one every month. So next month I'll probably add a different one. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, which one of these skills do you think should go? You agree with Josh, eighth? Ooh, vengeance, yes. Um, so eighth level, let's do that. I'm just gonna pop them up to eighth level, which is sick. I like that the Oath of Conquest is a good one. All right, so this is going to give us a lot more things we need to build on this character, which is going to be cool. So uh, let's start off again with the Paladin skills. Athletics, Insight, Intimidation, Medicine, Persuasion, or Religion. Which one of those should we take? I'm kind of gearing towards um, Intimidation. I feel like this Paladin just has like this like um, very aggressive mannerism to him based on his stance and... Uh, again, the gear that, that he uh, possesses with that big sword and that big shield, and he's like full plate. He's, he's really geared out, and I like the idea of intimidation. All right, Dave likes that as well, so we'll go intimidation as our first one, and athletics as the second one. Oh, Jay had said intimidation and persuasion. Persuasion is also really good. Um, I do like that better than athletics. Sorry, Dave. <clears throat> so intimidation and persuasion. Now we go down here to our fighting style. We get to choose an option in the fighting style for our paladin. Defense, dueling, great weapon, or protection. I'm kind of dancing between great weapon and protection. What do you all think? We haven't got there yet. We're gonna go, we're gonna go get him a name here in just a second. Uh, great weapon, good smarts, I like that. Great weapon fighting. All right, so we got great weapons fighting. Uh, sacred Oath. Someone had said Oath of Vengeance. I like Oath of Vengeance. He looks like he's Oath of Vengeance and because he is a Dark Souls miniature, that makes maybe dueling, that's true. So um, I like Oath of Vengeance. I think David mentioned it earlier. Let's go Oath of Vengeance. 
I like that. Definitely vengeance. All right. Um, sacred oath, the oath of vengeance. Ability score improvement. So we get to choose an option. Ability score or feat. What do we want to do with this character? Do we want to, when we get, because we're going to go back and roll all the stats here in a minute. Do we want to give him the ability score improvements or feat improvements? I feel like there might even be more to that. Yeah, there's a secondary one as well down here. So we get two, two choices there. What do y'all think? Because as soon as we're done here, we're going to jump back, give this character a name, roll stats, and then continue the build through. Okay, that's a good call. We can come back to that after we roll. Let's do that. First, let's go back to um, home on this character and give them a name. Let's take a look, another close-up of our miniature, and that'll help with a name on this. I mean, he just looks like wicked tough, too. It's like I'm, I'm thinking, and, and the other thing too is we could do the randomized name generator on the computer and maybe pick a, 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 an amalgam of a couple things that might pop. So what do y'all think? If I do a random name, it's a, a, a Texicus, I don't like that. Vandris Bright Hand, it's coming from Mini Painting Studio. Ramiram, Matthias. Way snoring. Well, the other thing, too, is oh, we have to pick a race. Dragomir. That's a cool name. Grimgrum. Um, well, real quick, let's, let's, um, what's, what's, a, what's a race? Are you thinking human? I mean, Goliath, even, maybe? I mean, he's a, he's a big miniature. I don't know how big he is in comparison to a regular... Human-sized miniature. I think they're about the same. Yeah, he's he's a relatively same size as a normal miniature. I do too. I like Bright Hand a lot. Bright Hand is a cool name. Just need to come up with a first name for them. Goliath is interesting as a, as an option. A, a a paladin Goliath would be interesting. But I'm I'm just like. Great weapon fighting, full plate, large shield. What does everybody else think? Yeah. What are you thinking? Half work. Half work. Ooh, true half orc. He, he does have that full face mask, and he may not take that off very often, but he could be a half orc as well. Ooh. And you see on his hip right there, he's got that, like, cloth. That could be, like... A remnant of, like a tribal, a tribal piece or something, that he he still maintains. I don't know. There's a lot, there's lots of options there. So whichever, uh, whichever race gets the first, you know, three picks is the one we're going to go ahead and take. So based on this miniature, what races do you guys think? I'm think I, I'm personally thinking that the whole idea of of a uh, um, half orc now is really more. I'm kind of feeling the half orc. Mini painting studio says drow. I mean, yeah, you could, and that would be funny. A drow with the last name Bright Hand. <laughs> But I'm thinking, I'm going to go back to the name while you guys, everybody out there is kind of working on that. Um, but we are, we do know Bright Hand is the last name to this paladin. I like, like, Bryce. Bryce Bright Hand. What do you mean fix the sword? Brent, I can't. Is it because that little curve in it? I can't fix that. It looks great right there. And there, and 
And, there, and then all of a sudden, vroom, there is no spoon. Yeah, there is no spoon. Hmm. <laughs> Torold, so, oh, it, it does sound or, or orcish, but Torold could be anything, and, but it, so we could still, it could land in, I do like that. We'll go, Daniel, thank you so much for uh, uh, Torold Bright Hand is our character's name. And go through all this. And good. So Torold Bright Hand is our character. We need to pick a race. Uh, again, we can pick the three that were kind of bouncing around are human, half orc, or Goliath. So, any input from the chat would be great. Otherwise, I think I'm going to pick half orc. Bright Hand as a half orc last name is pretty fun. I think I'm going to do it. Done. We have picked Half Orc. They get a lot of cool stuff. Dark Vision, they're menacing, relentless endurance, savage attacks. So they're going to have a lot of fun with that. So we've done the class. Um, we, so I don't have to pick the other one. I can pick Athletics now, so Athletics and Persuasion, because he's already, because of this Half Orc, is going to get Intimidation. Yep, Andrew, uh, half orc, and it is paladin. Yep, half orc paladin, always solid. Uh, now we can go to we're going to go to the abilities, and then we're going to come back and pick uh, whether we want to take a feat or take a um, uh, skill improvement. We went with uh, oath of vengeance. The Rejecting Grumash Paladin. That's true. All right, so first dice roll for our for our stats is going to be... Yep. We're going to... All right. Here we go. And I'm just going to put this anywhere, and then we'll adjust afterwards. So 10. And I'm just going to drop it in strength for right now. We'll add it... Um, we're gonna go with uh, manual, so we'll but we'll switch them around. These are just uh, placeholders for the stats themselves. These aren't the actual, unless you guys are like, no, roll down the line and they stay where they lay. <laughs> All right, next stat roll, and it is nine, ten, eleven. This paladin is awesome. <laughs> All right, our next stat roll. And just for everybody watching, you know, we always do it. Uh, we appreciate everybody that watches us here at Game Trade Media and uh, Building Character. If you are in, are so inclined to share, we, we would appreciate it. And just as a reminder, next week, Friday, uh, it's going to be a little later in the afternoon at 4 p.m., but Zeb Cook, um, part of the old TSR Guard, will be in studio with us building character. Uh, he's also one of the, the main creators behind the Planescape um, uh, world setting, so uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and You guys are going to be able to ask any questions you want. It's going to be a blast. Our next die roll is 9, 10, 11, 12. We're steadily going up. <laughs> Average Joe. That's yeah. Maybe we'll get a thirteen here in intelligence. Let's find out. Oh no, fifteen. I'll take a fifteen. Boom. All right. And next die roll. Oh, I'm gonna get rid of that one, and I'll take a sixteen. All right, and our final die roll. Dun, dun, dun. Is uh, another 15. That's actually not bad for stats. So we've got our stats now. 
but where do we want to put them? We've got a, a strength of 10, dex, we have a 10, 11, 12, two 15s and a 16. So yeah, overall those aren't bad stats and they will be modified if we want to go with a stat modification or, or if we want to take feats. Yeah, no negatives on the board, so that's always nice. So 16 strength, 15 con, 15 charisma. Okay, you know what, Dave, that's, I'll, we'll do that. So I'm gonna take the, the 16 strength and put the 10 in wisdom for now. Um, I'll put the 15, or a 12 in intelligence and a 15 in con. There we go. So we have currently 16 strength, 11 dex, con 15, intelligence 12, wisdom 10, charisma 15. I feel like that 12 needs to go into wisdom uh, and the 10 can go in intelligence. What do you guys think? Yeah, so he's going to have, because of his racial bonuses, he's going to get that 18 right there. And if we do take skills, uh, the charisma can pop up to a 17 at least. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make that call. I'm going to make the wisdom 12 and the intelligence 10. There we go. All right. Yeah, Benjamin, those are really good roles. Thanks for joining us. And uh, also Daniel Sherrod. Pleasure having you here. All right, so there we go. There's kind of what, what it's looking like right now. We can go back and choose, because he is going to be an eighth level paladin, we're gonna choose either a bonus increase or a um, feat. And we'll go back and do that right now. Going to class. And we scroll on down to ability score improvement. So we can either choose an ability score improvement or a feat. What do you think we should do? Take the, for the first one. For actor feat, interesting. Um, so if we go ability score bonus, we get to choose two ability scores, which could be both the uh, charisma and the constitution, which will make them 16, thus giving us an increased bonus in those two fields. So let's go ahead and do that. Charisma and Constitution. And then our second run, we can choose Ability Score Improvement or Feet. So we can look down here at Feet and see what we, we get as options. A ton. Why would we take Actor, by the way, Andrew? That's a great question, right? Uh, as a Paladin, uh, Oath of Vengeance. What would actor give us if we take it? Or do we want to become a great weapon master? Which is cool. Khan is already 16. We, we put the 16 in um, strength. Second one, take Resilient. All right, so if we go down here to Resilient, what does that do? In what? In Con. Increase the Chosen Ability score by one to a maximum of 20. You gain proficiency in saving throws using the Chosen Ability. All right, let's take a look at what that did to our character. Our Ability scores are now 18 Strength, 11 Dex, 18 Constitution, 10, 12, 16. That's a, that's a beast of a character. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a great character right there. Good call, everybody. All right, so we've done the abilities. We've done race and class. Um, let's check out description. Ooh, we get to pick the backgrounds. <laughs> so as a background, you know, you have that the, the long list from Acolyte all the way down to Urchin with um, Folk Hero, Gladiator, 
um, a knight. What do you think? I, I, I like knight as an option. Um, because he has a half orc, could he still be a noble? Mm hmm. And why is that why he has the last name Bright Bright Hand? Because he was born into a noble family uh, outside of uh, a, you know a situation happened, right? Maybe a uh, daughter in the noble family fell in love with a half, uh, with another half orc and or an orc or whatever. You never know. It doesn't always have to be a painful situation. Um, Clan chief is a kind of noble. Last of his tribe. Um, Paladin pirate. <laughs> I don't know if this guy'd be a pirate with all that armor on, because he had sank to the to the bottom of the sea with you. I I, I kind of like knight or noble. We, I think, but I think we did noble last time, didn't we? Last uh, last week. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> or soldier, knight or soldier or folk hero. R, I get you. <laughs> Milos is uh, the one that said paladin pirate. Thanks, Milos. And I hope I'm saying your name right. All right, so, soldier, Daniel, we got one for soldier, so we have soldier, paladin, folk, or soldier, knight, or hero, uh, folk hero, those are the kind of three that I think kind of falls under, or even uh, maybe he was an acolyte in the, in the priesthood or at a monastery or something, and then moved in beyond to become a paladin. One vo and he uh, Milos uh, says uh, one vote for knight, so that's two votes for knight because that's kind of where I'm also falling. We just need one more vote for knight, and that's the one we'll take, or any other one. The first one to three is how we usually do it here on the show. Everybody, the first uh, character class to three or background to three is the one that we usually pick. So. But right now, so we're kind of falling on night. And I kind of feel like that's where we're going to land anyways. So I'm going to click it. You understand wealth, power, and privilege. You carry a, a noble title, and your family owns land, collects taxes, and wields significant political influence. You might be a pampered aristocrat, unfilling with work or discomfort. That's not the case. Or a disinherited scoundrel with a uh, disproportionate sense of entitlement. Or you could be an honest, hardworking landowner who cares deeply about the people who live and work on your land, keenly aware of your responsibility to them. Nice. So we get to come down here to our skill proficiencies. We get to pick some stuff. So we've already taken... I'm kind of thinking perception. What do you all think? I'm going to go with perception on that one. Uh, total proficiencies, or I'm sorry, uh, tool proficiencies. We get to pick a little gambling piece, some dice, dragon chess, playing cards, or three dragon ante. Um, I always pick three dragon ante just because. But now this is important. What other languages will this particular character know? Already has orcish. There is... Draconic. Oh, we're gonna definitely roll some dice here in a minute when we get to when we have to pick the line of stuff. Um, I like the the idea that maybe he speaks uh, Elvish or Gnomish. But there's hold on. Dave says infernal or abyssal. You're right. Does fit the vengeance theme. Let's go Abyssal, right off the top. Retainers. You have the service of three retain retainers loyal to your family. That's cool. Suggested characteristics. Now, this is where we're going to roll some dice, everybody. So, personality traits, we pick two, but we have to roll a D8 for those. So, we will do that. I'm going to roll two D8. A 
a one and a three. One, my eloquent flattery, flattery makes everyone I talk to feel like the most wonderful and important person in the world, and no one could doubt my, uh, no one could doubt by looking at my regal bearing that I am a cut above the unwashed masses. Wow. Um, we, so let's just say that, yes, he is a half-orc, but he still, because of his uh, upbringing and everything, may still kind of feel like, uh, just by looking at him, he still has that imagery of nobility. He just may have an extra long, like, tusky-looking fang that sticks up uh, over a lip or something. But he keeps himself well, well groomed, well put together. Uh, Sarah, we are using the D and uh, D Beyond um, site to build the character today. Um, we're going to be using this next week when Zeb Cook comes in, so we want to make sure that uh, we got it down pat. So Zeb Cook will be here next week at 4 p.m. Uh, for building character, and for anybody that doesn't know, Zeb is an author and a uh, world builder and a creator of lots of D and D. Uh, content back in the old TSR days. So it's going to be a lot of fun to have him in studio talking about all the things that he's seen, been a part of, helped build what his thoughts are on how D&D is now and where it might be going in the future. Um, and how, you know, with the current surge of interest and everything in regards to this game that we all love so much, it's going to be interesting to get his take on the whole, whole thing. And it's also going to be a fun little story as to how I met Zeb. Uh, you guys are going to like it. All right, so our next part is ideals. And that's a D6, so we'll roll a D6. Two, responsibility. It is my duty to respect the authority of those above me just as those below must respect mine. So this guy is coming across as like this really hard-lined individual based on what we're rolling. And that could be it. He could be like so like laser-focused on the law and the position and status that he may have and what his his rights and responsibilities are at the level uh, in, the, in the food chain of hierarchy that he lays, um, which could be interesting, even, if, even as a half-work. So we'll take that. Responsibility. His bonds, also a D6. Four. Ooh. I am in love with the heir of a family that my family despises. All right, so this individual has a half-orc paladin from a noble family of questionable, you know, you know, who knows the whole background to this character, but is in love with, a, with an heir of a family that his family despises. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a Romeo-Juliet thing in there. That could be fun to kind of flesh out especially uh, giving that to a dungeon master to be like, this is something that we've got going on. It can definitely draw some cool character and adventure hooks, which are a lot of fun. And then finally, flaws. Uh, also a D6, so we'll roll there. One. Woo! <laughs> uh, I secretly believe that everyone is beneath me. So looking at that character and everything else we've rolled, that really fits this, this character's build. He is in, an, in a hierarchy. He knows his position and his status. And yes, everybody, he, he, I don't even think he even secretly believes it. I think he openly believes it and lets people know that, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You are but a town guard. I am the knight of the realm. Stay in your lane which is, <laughs> yikes. All right. So we did all that. So we have all that cool intel. Um, but here's the fun part. Equipment. Let's dress them up. All right. So with that, we're back at looking at the miniature. Um, and he's eighth level, so you know that some of the items that he is wielding and carrying and equipped with is going to be probably of a magical nature. Uh, so let's take a look. We got a really sweet shield. 
We've got full plate armor. It's got that great sword. And I kind of feel like, yes, the helmet fits the armor, but that helm might have a little bit more going on with it, if you know what I mean. It might be like a helm of telepathy or something like that. Let's take a look at what we can get in the add items section of helms. So we have Helm of Comprehend Languages, Helm of Telepathy, Helm of Teleportation, and Helm of Brilliance. Who Helm of Brilliance, what does that do? I mean, I know, but we'll talk about it. This dazzling helm is set with 1D10 diamonds, 2D10 rubies, and 3D10 fire opals, and a lot of other opals, and a lot of stuff. You gain the following benefits while wearing it. You can use an action to cast one of the following spells, Daylight, Fireball, Prismatic Spray, Wall of Fire. As long as it has at least one diamond, the helm emits dim light in a 30-foot radius. As long as the helm has at least one ruby, you have resistance to fire damage. Dave, that is true. Animated Shield is where he just kind of puts it out and lets it go and it kind of protects him and kind of, that, that would be kind of cool. Um, I think the Helm of Brilliance is a no-go. Um, and the other thing too is we can absolutely create something new if we'd like. Make a whole new helm. Let me look up Animated Shield. If that's on here. Brooch of Shielding, Ring of Shielding, Shield plus one. There it is, Animated Shield. While holding the shield, you can speak its command word and a bonus action to cause it to animate. The shield leaps into the air and hovers in your space to protect you. All right, so that's really cool. And if we look closely at the shield, maybe there's something that can speak to that as its ability. It looks like there might be a, like an eye or maybe even some wings coming off the top of that. So. I do like the idea of an animated shield, especially with him being a great weapons master, or great weapons wielder, he's not a master. Um, so I will pick and add the animated shield to his repertoire. And now let's go to plate mail. It's full plate, it's ridiculous. Um, we have many options here that we can take. Yeah, Sarah absolutely had to take it. So we can go with just adamantine plate, mithril plate. There's also the armors of resistance. Um, so you have pretty much any type of element or chemical. So we have acid resistance, cold resistance, fire, force, lightning, uh, necrotic, Ooh. Daniel says, it's the armor that stays clean no matter what. <laughs> I like that. So if I were to choose, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it out there and I'll see if what you all think, but I like the idea of it being armor of necrotic resistance. You have resistance to necrotic damage while you wear this armor. Sarah says Mithril. Mithril is a great choice. Mithril plate has an armor class base 18. Mithril is a light, flexible metal if the armor normally imposes disadvantage on dexterity. Checks it has strength requirement or has a strength requirement. The Mithril version of the armor does not have those things. That's super cool. So they wouldn't have any issues with stealth. Ooh, no disadvantage. Mm. That's also cool when you think about the idea of the character's oath of vengeance. Yeah, he's going to go in there and, and fight hard, but he's not going to, you know, if he didn't have the mithril plate, he would have disadvantage in trying to be sneaky. What does everybody else think? Mithril or armor of necrotic resistance? Of course, 
I wish there was a th way you could uh, modify armor of necrotic resistance and make it mithril. Yeah, you're right. Not everything has to be crazy magic. I don't see armor of gleaming on here. Let's see, load more. Yeah, it's not in my... It might be in a different uh, add-in book to the to the program. I've only got the basic player's handbook on here right now. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take the armor of ne uh, necrotic resistance. But the one thing, too, Daniel, that you're going to learn, um, I like making epic characters, man. I like making them like they're just like, they are heroic. They are, I'm not saying Monty hauled up, but they, everything about them is purpose, and they have a cool story to be told. Um, and sometimes that, that would, will include characters that have nothing. But when they look like that, and they look that cool, I want to give them some stuff. So... We will go with him, Armor of Resistance, Necrotic. All right, it's in Xanthar's. I think Xanthar's is probably going to be the next one I get to add into the, the library on the program here, which would be really cool. All right, so we took that. And uh, based on basically that, the, uh, we have the Great Sword is the last piece. So let's take a look. Or if there's any swords that you all are really familiar with that you think would, would absolutely fit this character. I know, Sarah, I do need to update it with Xanthar's. Um, I didn't want to be like spending all the monies <laughs> right off the bat and put all the things on here. Um, but you're right, Xanthar's is so good. And so is the, the, the Sword Coast expansion piece too because it adds even more cool stuff. So we're going to go to weapons. And we'll just go to swords. Um, well, that didn't work. And we'll just see what we get. So we have great swords. And that he is a wielder of a great weapon. Battle axe, plus one, we're in the plus one range. So we could go with any of those right there. But if uh, Sarah, yeah, that's like 500 bucks, yeah, for the full bundle of current of current uh, books that you can add to this, which is, in and of itself is a great price point because um, it does, th I mean, this just helps immensely in creating characters uh, and efficiently and fast. So, yes, I am advocating for D&D &D Beyond. A vicious great sword. You're right. That is what we're gonna do. Doesn't necessarily make it a super magical item. It just makes it a very painful one. <laughs> so let's find that vicious great sword. When you roll a twenty on your attack roll with this magic weapon, the target takes an extra seven damage of the weapon's type. That's not. I mean, that's cool. It's not a lot, uh, and I like that. So let's go ahead. Dave, good call. That equipment is added. We'll go up here to our inventory and wear it, wear it, wield it. And then uh, I feel like we should attune the animated shield. Attune the necrotic plate. And yeah, perfect. Next. So let's take a look at our character. Sweet. So Torold Bright Hand has an 18 strength, 11 dex, 18 constitution. This guy's sick. 10 intelligence, 12 wisdom, 16 charisma. He is level 8. He's got some decent hit points there with 84. Um, his passive uh, intelligence, wisdom, and uh, perception, investigation, and insight checks are pretty decent. 
He's got pretty decent athletics. His skill set looks really nice. Where's Intimidation? Plus six. That's nice. His athletics is his strongest, uh, strong, strongest skill. Um, he's got a plus seven to hit with that vicious greatsword. All right. So that, yeah, he's he's beast. He's a beast right there. And uh, he's got all this stuff. Lay, lay on hands, uh, divine sense, unarmed strikes, all the good things you would see there. His bonus actions. He has uh, some spells that he can pull from. We didn't really pick a lot of those. Uh, charm, uh, channel divinity, divine sense, lay on hands. Those are his limited use things. We already kind of looked at that. And yeah, so we got spells. So he's got some cool spells there. All of his gear. We only gave him his his, uh, his basic magic items gear. We didn't gear him out with like backpack, bedroll, any of that stuff. If if anybody wanted to do that, they can uh, they can add all that stuff themselves later. All the cool features and traits that this particular character gets. Class features as a paladin, um, sacred oath, oath of vengeance, which is really cool, and all the descriptions. We didn't give him an alignment. That's okay. We know what he is. He's lawful something. <laughs> lawful evil or lawful good. Uh, it's pretty good stuff. Hey, Patrick. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, plus seven is great. Walter. Uh, so, yeah, we got lots of cool stuff there. Um, so we're going to be uh, we're cutting it a little short today. Uh, but I want to let you all know at 3.05 right here on Game Trade Media, we're going to pre be premiering a video uh, from a, a company called um, Looney Labs. They have a new game that they are going to be uh, sending out soon, and we got a little sneak peek of it. So it's a, a video we recorded earlier this week, but we want to premiere it. It's going to be at 3.05 live uh, right here. I say live, but it's right here on uh, Game Trade Media Facebook, so check that out. I come back, and you can ask questions and stuff. I'll be in the chat uh, answering any questions that you all might have um, and share it and everything. But uh, thanks for joining us today here at um, Building Character. I'm Rick. This has been Game Trade Media's amazing opportunity to have lots of fun here in studio. And I will see you at the game store. Watching Building Character. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.